church. It's so good to be here. It's so good to be able to uh, spend this Sabbath day with you, starting the new year. Uh, what year are we in? 2020. 2020. Can you believe it? Some of us remember 1999. <laughs> Some of us remember 1979. Uh, but we're so glad that you're here once again. My name is Carlos Pasillas. It is a joy for me to serve and work, and work with you. Um, I got to meet some of you already this week, so uh, be patient. As I said a couple weeks ago, uh, my desire is to know every one of you by name. And so I might say Deborah, and your name is uh, uh, Joanne. Um, but uh, be patient. I want to learn uh, and get to know each one of you this morning. So you'll get used to the way I, I sort of preach and how uh, we... Uh, serve in this capacity, and so you always see a sermon buffer. We call those just to prep. It's sort of my introduction to my sermon. Uh, here this morning, we are just going to preach this one uh, sole sermon. Uh, but then, when we get started, we will be doing a sermon series that I'll be mentioning in just in a couple more minutes. So I invite you to open your Bibles to the Book of Philippians, and that's where we are going to be at this morning. And this morning's message is titled, The God of the New. Now, if you don't have a Bible, it's okay. Uh, I have this uh, the screen up there. You can read with me. Uh, the book of today is the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter uh, 1, verses 6 and 9. If you're ready, we'll read it together. It says, and this is the New Living Translation, and I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Jump down a couple of verses to verse 9. I pray that your love will overflow more and more, and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and in understanding. Do you believe that, church? Amen. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for what you are doing and what you are about to do. God, we thank you so much for the start of a new year, 2020. I can't even believe it, but God, I know that you have a plan for us, and as we start this morning, we ask that you hide me behind your cross. This is your message. These are your people. Manifest yourself at this time. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So, we just finished... The holiday season. For many of us, many of us perhaps travel. Let's see a show of hands. How many of you traveled this Christmas season? Let's see. A couple? few? Okay. So coming back, getting into the, the way of things, right? Perhaps, uh, in my case, starting a new job, uh, getting familiarized with the freeways and, and traffic, which I never had before. Uh, so we passed uh, Christmas. We passed New Year's. So my question for you this morning is, what is your New Year's resolution? <laughs> Some of you guys are really rolling your eyes, huh? Now, now before we start uh, saying what we have not done and what we are planning to do, let me share with you what I discovered uh, through an ABC poll and the top six uh, New Year's resolution for 2019. Okay, so this is this a year old, if you can say it. We're going to start from the bottom and listen to see, maybe, maybe you need ideas, okay? Maybe these are some of the things that you want to make as your New Year's resolution. So the sixth one, at the bottom, with 7% was find love. And we won't ask the show of hands who want to participate in that. Um, but number five, with 11%, is make new friends. Maybe this year you want to make new friends, okay? Get rid of some of the old ones. Um, <laughs> number four. You know, you gotta replace, replace. Get a new job or hobby. And that was with 12%. And number three, with 24%, I think some of you might want to do this travel. And who wants to have that one as a New Year's resolution? We're gonna travel more, okay? And number two, with 37%, is lose weight. Lose weight, okay? So, what is number one? What do you think is the number one? New Year's resolution with 37%. Save money. That's 2019, that's not 2020. <laughs> you see, these New Year's resolutions may sound familiar, but this year we want you 
you to focus on something. What is it that we want you to focus on? Because when we talk about focus, it's, it's where we put our, our mark. It's where the destination we want to reach. If this was a mountain, this is the mountain we want to climb. If this is the bridge that we need to cross, this is the bridge we're going to cross. So the question that I have for you this morning is, what is your New Year's resolution? And what is your strategy to reach it? Because many of us can wish all we want, but unless we have the strategy, unless we take baby steps, we will always just be with wishes. So, this morning I invite you to come with me to the, uh, verse 6, and we'll see what Paul tells us, and how it can help us with our New Year's resolution. Ready? There it is. In verse 6 it says, And I am certain that God who began the good work within you, say it with me, will continue. Will continue. You see, for all those uh, scholars out there, we know that the Bible was not written in Egypt. The Bible was written, uh, the New Testament, much of it was written in Greek. And the Greek word for will continue has nothing to do with the English translation. You see, when we look at the original letter or the original word, what it's actually saying is God who worked in you, the God who's working in you has already accomplished it, has already done it. It is already executed. Now, it's us. We strive and we work, right? We wake up a little early, we go to the gym, we do things differently, right? But God is already saying, if I already started in you, it's already executed. All you have to be, or all you have to do is be willing to be used. And so what we see here, God is saying, I've already accomplished my work in you, and is his work uh, until it's finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. This is where some of us stop. This is where some of us don't continue because we tend to look at 2019 as, as the blueprint of 2020, right? And as we saw in the video, we realized there are things that we're just never going to be able to fix. And, and there are things that just are going to be the same way, and, and that's how it is. You just got to move on. That's how life is going to be. But this morning, I want to encourage you to put your focus not on... 2019, but put your focus on God, and put your focus not on the past, but put your focus on what God wants to do in your life, because sometimes we put, put our focus on failure, right? We look at all the times we said we were going to go to the gym, and all the times we said we were going to save a little more money, and all the times we were going to actually do something different, right? And it didn't happen. And we focus on failure, and what tends to happen is if you focus on failure, what's going to happen? You're going to fail. And, and, and this morning, we want you to say, okay, failure is part of the system, part of the, of the growing process. But then we go to the other extreme, right? The other extreme looks sort of like this. We focus not on failing. So we all together do away with any commitment, right? We don't want to go that route because we already know what we're tend to do or we're prone to do. And so we're in one extreme or the other. We're focused on failure, and all we see is the, you know, the rubble around us, or we're so afraid of failing that we say no to everything, right? Maybe some of us this last year, 2019, held an office here at our church, and things didn't go so well. And maybe you had to make a decision, say, you know what, I'm not going to help anymore because, well, you know, for X and Y reason, but I just don't want to not commit. I, I don't want to let people down. I, I don't want to be a failure. You see, failure is not always a bad thing. Maybe you've heard of this person, this person called Michael Jordan. I won't ask if, if, if anyone does not know who Michael Jordan is. I'm assuming most of us know who Michael Jordan is. And Michael Jordan said this a few years ago in a Nike commercial. He says, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot. And what happens? I missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life. Now stop there. Does that sound like some of us? I think it sounds like all of us, right? We've all made mistakes. We've all wished we could take things back, right? But this is part of what we need to know this morning, church. But that is why I succeed. Failure is part of 
of the growing process. If you don't fail, then you won't grow. Now, it's not, I'm, I'm a born failure, and I'm just going to fail, and fail, and fail. No. Well, let's, let's go on. Another person says this. Those who are afraid to fail will coast through life and say it with me. Never. And never come close to their potential. Church, we're at the precipice of our potential. We are at the edge of what God is about to do in us. Amen. And yet some of us are, fa are fearing failure and we're looking at, well, we don't want to do this and we don't want to do that. Brothers and sisters, this is the time where we have to close our eyes and just go. We have to trust God because if we don't, we will never reach our full potential. Failure, honest failure, despite genuine effort, is an underrated teacher and motivator as well as a sign that one is striving at most to full capacity. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is something that someone needs to hear this morning. Maybe this week you, you felt like throwing in the towel. You said, I give up. I quit. I can't do this. God is telling you this morning, yes, you can. If I am with you, you can do all things. If I am with you, you can reach your full potential. But the key is, who are you with? The key is, who is right beside you? So this morning, we want you to know that failure is not always a bad thing. But failure is part of the process. Because when we look at the book of Philippians, we realize that this is a letter from a person who was in prison. You see, Paul was in Rome when he wrote the book of Philippians. And Paul wasn't in this luxurious suite. He wasn't, you know, staring up to, uh, to uh, you know, to the sunset uh, out of the Mediterranean. No, he was in a dungeon somewhere, cold and wet, chained to a Roman guard. And when the early church heard that Paul was in prison, they thought, oh no, what's going to happen to our leader? What's going to happen with the person who is inspiring us and motivating us? How are we going to continue if, if our men in charge of our pastors in prison? And what did Paul do? He wrote this letter to encourage those who were discouraged. Imagine that. Paul prepared to pray, and, and he was asking God to encourage the church that was free while he was in chains. But there's one thing that we can take that Paul tells us this morning. Paul focused not on his circumstances, but rather on the promises of God. Because that's what we tend to do, don't we? We look at our circumstances. We don't have enough money. We don't have a job. We don't have a working car. We don't have the best of health. And we look at these things and we say, that God must have abandoned us. That God is no longer with us. But brothers and sisters, take what Paul is sharing with us in the book of Philippians. Do not look at your circumstances and say, oh, woe oh, me. But rather look at your circumstances and know, what has God promised to me? Stand on the promises of God and you will see your future open up to the amazing thing that God wants to do in you. Focus not on your circumstances. Focus not on the things that you don't have, but rather look at the things that God has blessed you with. And if you are here this morning and you have a full set of teeth, you're ready. Two steps ahead. Okay? <laughs> I know some of you, you know, that's still a work in progress, but it's okay. As long as you can smile, you have hope. Amen? Amen? And so church, what we have to understand this morning is what Paul is teaching us as we start a new year, as we look back at 2019. 2019 is in the past. In Spanish we say, I ya se que no, en el pasado. Don't need to worry about that anymore. For 2020, it's a new, new day, a new chapter. And God is trying to encourage us through the book of Philippians this morning. Because this is what I want you to know. And church, you'll get used to the way we do things, but this is the one point I want you to focus in on. That's going to be the word for today. Focus. Now I want you to repeat it with me. I want to hear you, okay? I want to hear my church say with me. Ready? At the count of three. One, two, three. Where you focus is where your people are. Say it with me. Where you focus is where your feet will follow. Hmm. Where you focus. Where you center your life. If your life is about having a good retirement, that's what's going to happen. If your life is about 
getting ahead in your job and, and reaching the, 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 the financial ladder, then that's what's going to happen. But if your focus is heavenly, believe it or not, brothers and sisters, God is going to work in you to accomplish his mission. I want to share with you a quick story. When I was a, a freshman in college back in California, you know, you know how it is with freshmen, we're always trying to uh, be creative with our schedule, and I needed a, an extra credit curricular hour. And so I thought, well, what's the best way to get an A? I'll take a swimming class at noon. So there I am uh, in England, up there at Pacific Union College, and I'm taking this swimming class, and I'm the freshman, I'm the youngest of all the group, everyone else were, were juniors and seniors who needed that class to, you know, get enough credits to uh, graduate. So I was there and taking my time, you know, and I really wanted to impress, I'll be honest, I really wanted to impress the young ladies in that class. Uh, you know, I really wanted to show them, you know, who this freshman guy was. And so I, like most people, was, you know, in the water, practicing, getting down my poise and my form, because it was, it was a swimming class. And I remember the midterm, okay? The midterm was, was very basic, very simple. It was a 400-yard dash. So it was go back, go back, go forward, go back, go forward, go back, okay? And so I must have been told, but I don't remember this, um, Everyone needed to do their 400-yard dash because it was part of their final. Okay, so it was, you do your midterm with your time. That is what you have to do for your final. Well, in my mind was, well, I'm going to show up and I'm going to show them how fast I could swim. And I remember swimming and I was looking to the side and I noticed no one was going at my pace. I thought, am I that fast or, or, or are they just watching me how fast I can swim? And so I'm swimming, you know, going my fastest, and I'm seeing everybody sort of like, you know, looking around like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> well, later I find out that in order to pass the class, I need to be my midterm time. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine how the final looked, right? <laughs> I had everyone's attention, that's for sure. I know everybody knew who I was and I was like, <laughs> you know, everybody knew who I was. <laughs> and I said, all right, so everybody's like, are you ready, are you ready? And I remember the teacher, she sounded off the alarm, and everybody starts swimming. And of course, everybody's doing a little bit more than they did in the midterm. Why? Because they don't have to do so hard. But me, the grand, you know, smarty guy, I had to really push hard. And I remember midway, I was not caring about any form, any boys. I was just like, like a nut that had just been shot, I was just flapping my wings to get to the other side. But in one occasion, while I had my head underwater and I was trying to get my ground, I saw at the very end of the pool a cross, a black cross. And I said to myself in my mind, I don't know what I have to do, I don't know how much strength I will have, but all I have to do is reach that cross. And when I reach the cross, I would go underneath the water, and I would look down the water, and I would see the same cross. And that was my focal point. Brothers and sisters, I did not uh, graduate. I did not uh, pass the class. But I can tell you this. I put my eyes on that cross, and I didn't stop. I don't know what is of you this year. I don't know what 2020 has in store for us. But if you put your eyes on the cross, you will reach your mark because... God is in the business of being the provider. And Paul shows us that there is so much going on, but we have to put our focus on him. Let's go back to verse 9. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9, it says, I pray that your love will overflow more and more, and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. You see, when Paul uses this word, Growing. He has this context of, of some type of, of person who is not just a baby, but is actually maturing. It's interesting that when Paul writes this, I don't know if he was speaking to Luke at this time, but come with me to the book of Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. If you don't have it, no worries, we have it up here on our sky Bible. It says, And Jesus Say it with me. And Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. You see this growth? You see this? Jesus is growing. Imagine that. The God of the universe, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago, 
The God of the universe coming down into this world and becoming a baby and learning how to speak and learning how to read and learning how to use a cup and use a fork. And I don't know if he had a tortilla, but having the ability, okay, to learn. What does it say? That though we celebrate Christmas, and I'm not trying to knock down Christmas, we celebrate the nativity, right? We celebrate the baby Jesus coming into this world, which is great, which is awesome. But this baby Jesus didn't remain a baby forever, but rather became a man. And not just any man, he became the man who died on the cross. And not just dying on the cross, but he was actually buried and he rose from the grave three days later. This is the Jesus that we need to imitate. Amen. Because so many times we celebrate Christmas, but what we need to do is imitate the Christmas. Because Jesus came, he was born, but he didn't stay that way. And brothers and sisters, you were born into Christ. You come to church, but you can't stay that way because 2020, this is our focus. Our focus is spiritual growth. Amen. The Grand Prairie Seventh-day Adventist Church's focus this year is spiritual growth. And this is what we will do throughout this year. I want to be. I want to be your resource. I want to be your, your corner man. I want to help you reach your full potential because this is what I want you to know. Staying the same is no longer an option. Amen. If 2019 was similar to 2018, then guess what? 2020 will be a little different. I've always asked this question to my youth, and I ask this now to my church. If you were to rate your spirituality from 1 to 10, don't say it, it's a rhetorical question. <laughs> I always have to say that because someone will blurt it out. Uh, from 1 to 10, 1 being very poor and 10 being very spiritually strong. In your mind, think of a number. Okay? Now, now that you have that number, the next question is very simple. Where do you want your number to be? Let's just say some of you said, I'm on 5 right now. I'm at a 4. Okay? Yes, the ideal would be I want to be at a 10. But we have to work our way up there, okay? But if you're at a four, and this year you want to be at a six, well, guess what? You can't stay the same. You can't be doing the same thing, hanging out with the same people, doing the same thing. you got to make changes. Because baby steps are better than no steps at all. But this is how we reach our potential, by having a strategy. And this morning, as we look at what Paul is telling us, we can't stay the same. But let's be honest. Whenever we start to put spiritual goals, what tends to happen? The enemy starts to press a little hard, doesn't he? And the enemy starts to pull in his troops and say, we're going to do whatever we can to discourage this, this person who's wanting to make a commitment to God. And that's what Paul tells us in Philippians. Come with me to Philippians chapter 1, or if you're already there, turn with me to verse 12. And listen to what Paul says. In verse 12, it says, And I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything, stay with me, church, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. Right. Everything? Everything? Losing my job? Everything? Being in the hospital? Everything? Having to say a prayer? Of having to say a prayer of dedication to a family member that's no longer there. Everything? See, Paul understood Romans 8 28. All things work together for those who love God. And brothers and sisters, as we face 2020, many of us have faced very hard challenges in 2019. If I can be open and honest, this last year was very difficult for my family. My mother, who has been my pride and joy, who has been my best friend ever since I can believe, I can remember, uh, unfortunately had an aneurysm, a stroke. And at the one point, we almost thought we were going to lose her. And Paul says everything. You see, God is in the business of using even people. You see, in our Western mindset, we think that pain is bad, that pain is not good. But you see, pain is part of the process. And when you understand this, you realize even with the aneurysm, even with the stroke,
is part of God's plan. And here's what's the best thing, brothers and sisters. Because of his chains, Rome received Paul. And because of his chains, men and women were set free from the gospel of Christ. Because, brothers and sisters, let's be honest, growth produces if we as a church want to grow, if we as a church want to burst from the seams, do you really know what that entails? We're going to face some very serious challenges this year. We're going to face some very dire situations. Not to disturb you, just to encourage you. Why? Because God is in the business of helping us. God is in the business of reaching our full potential. But he knows that any muscle that wants to grow needs to be ripped and needs to be stretched, doesn't it? For those of us who, who go and work out, we realize, and when you're curling, you know, those 20-pounders or those 5-pounders or those 2-pounders, right? Something's happening in the muscle. It's tearing. It's tearing. And every time you tear that muscle, the next day you're very sore and you're very, you know, you can't do this. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Uh, you realize what's happening. That muscle is getting stronger. And if we want to spiritually grow, guess what? With growth, with growth, pain will be the result. Yeah. Our purpose here, brothers and sisters, say it with me, is spiritual growth. We want to get you from your five to a seven. We want to get you from your six to an eight. And if God's willing, we want to get you from an eight to a ten. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Because spiritually, we cannot stay babies any longer. And maybe this year, someone here in this room needs to make a drastic change. Maybe someone in this room needs to start looking at who they befriend and what they entertain themselves with. And we have to say, if we want to be spiritually giants, we need to make some changes. Seriously. Hmm. Our focus will be spiritual growth. You see, in the following weeks, we're going to start a sermon series titled Pray More. <coughs> We believe that if we want to be in tune with God's will, we need to know what God wants from our lives. And that is comes with prayer. And I know all of us, let's be honest, we all need to pray a little bit more, don't we? And some of us perhaps, uh, you know, have been in church all our lives, but we feel that sometimes our prayers don't reach uh, beyond the ceiling. That's what we want to encourage you to come back. Bring a friend with you. Bring a friend as we journey together, as we look at what is the right method of prayer? What's the best prayer that God always says yes to? You'll be fascinated to know there is a prayer, brothers and sisters, that God never says no to. So I want you to come back in the next couple of weeks as we start announcing our new sermon uh, series titled Pray More. But this is the spiritual, uh, uh, this is the spiritual benchmark we want to reach. We want to pray more. Maybe this New Year's resolution, you said you want to read your Bible at least 10 minutes a day. That's a good start, right? The ideal would be an hour. But, but baby steps are better than no steps at all. So we realize here that maybe reading our Bibles 10 minutes a day, or, or perhaps not just praying, but having a prayer journal. Hmm. You know, maybe for someone in this room, coming to church more than two times. Maybe coming to church three times. And perhaps even taking on a leadership you see, uh, it's interesting that uh, when we talk about New Year's resolution, I found this article that talked about, you know, the words that we say and how we approach it. And most of the time when we talk about New Year's resolutions, we say things like, I'm going to, I want to, right? Well, this is, this one person was saying, instead of saying, I'm going to, or I want to, say, when I, when I reach my goal of 10 pounds, when I start reading my Bible every 10 minutes or uh, 10 minutes every day. When I, that means you already in your mind have already accomplished what you desire. So maybe church this morning, we need to say, when I reach my spiritual growth, when I reach my spiritual potential, God is going to do great things. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to end with what Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. It says this, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things. Church, that is true. No one is saying here that we're perfect and, and look at me, this is how you should do it. Or that I have already reached.
reach perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. He goes on to say, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. What is the one thing that he wants us to focus on? Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. 2019 is in the past. Amen? Now, we've set our eyes on the prize. Verse 14. So I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is God. You set your focus on God. You set your focus on Jesus. And by God's help, you will accomplish whatever you desire. So maybe this year, this year, someone in this room needs to take a serious look and say, God, I need to make some changes. God, I, I need to start looking at my life differently. Maybe you're a parent with small children. Maybe, maybe you're a mom who's looking at your little ones and saying, I need to make a difference in the life of my children. I need to be the example that they need. And maybe you're a dad or, or you're a grandfather or a great uncle. And you need to tell yourself, this year I want to make things different. I love what Lamentations 3.3 says, that God's mercies are new every morning. So this year, the start of a new year, 2020, the very first Saturday of the year, I want to invite you, if it is your desire, to recommit your life to God, I want to invite you at this time to please stand. Now, don't feel obligated, don't feel pressured, but I want you to say in your heart, God, I want to make a community. I want to spiritually grow. Praise God. Because this is the church. This is the church that God is waiting for. This is the church that Grand Prairie needs. These are the leaders, the men and women and children who will bring in the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. With God's focus, with God accompanying us, we will reach our full potential. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, your church is standing. Your church is seeking your face, God. And you have promised us that if we turn from our wicked ways and we seek your face, that you, God, will hear our prayers and you will bless our land. God, Father, we also realize that there are things in our lives that we need to seriously look to. The ways we entertain ourselves, the things that we use, perhaps we need to make some changes, Father. But Lord, we know that you're in the business of recreating, of restoring, God. And so, Father, we ask as we start 2020 that our focus may be you. God, that our focus may be being spiritual giants in our homes, in our workplaces, and in our classes, and in our schools, God. This year, we want to ask a special blessing over the leadership. We want to ask a special blessing over our elders and our leaders, God. We ask that 